up, Hope Kids? Pastor Tony here, hanging out with you guys for Hope Kids at Home. And if no one has told you yet, let me be the first one to tell you, Merry Christmas! Christmas is quickly approaching, and we all know what Christmas is about, right? It's about eating Christmas cookies, or decorating gingerbread houses, or it is about a big uh, guy in a red suit. It's about watching Christmas movies, maybe Elf and Home Alone. And while all those things are part of Christmas, we all know what we truly celebrate Christmas for, and that is the gifts. So that leads us to our game for today. It's actually gonna be kind of a weird one, but it's around gifts. There's gonna be two weird items that come up on the screen and you have to decide what would Pastor Tony choose as a gift out of those two. So what you're gonna do is just like what we've done a couple weeks ago, write down the answer of what you think would be a better gift that I would receive. Send that in to us. Um, you can email that to me at tony at hopechurchlv.com. And then I'm gonna total it up and I'll announce next week what my what I would receive out of those gifts. So get some, get a paper, get a pen or pencil ready because we're gonna play what would Pastor Tony want as a gift. All right, there were some pretty strange gifts on there. I don't know if I would receive all of them, but if I had to choose, I would have to choose out of one of those two. So make sure you guys send those in. But like I said, we celebrate Christmas because of gifts, but let me pause and hold on there because a lot of times we think of Christmas as in those kinds of gifts, as in things, presents underneath our tree or in our stocking or what we hope to receive on Christmas. We think of gifts as the reason why we celebrate Christmas, and to a degree that is true, except there is one extremely important, awesome gift that we can receive every single Christmas without fail. We don't have to wonder if it's gonna show up under our tree or not. We don't have to worry about if Santa's gonna bring it, or if our parents are gonna put it in the tree, or if it's gonna be there when we wake up in the morning. The reality is, is that there is a gift for us that waits for us, not just at Christmas, but all year long. And this gift was given to us, not just on Christmas, but at the first Christmas. A lot of you know what I'm talking about, but it happened in a town of Bethlehem, where the gift of a baby was brought into this world. And this baby would grow up to change human history as we know it. So we're gonna dive into our so-and-so show, and I'll see you guys after the video is done. Brandon, grab some swim trunks and meet me outside for some fun in the sun. Oh boy. Hey, Brandon. Come on over here. I just threw some hot dogs on the grill. John, what are you doing? Well, we've been cooped up inside for so long, I thought we might as well come out here and take advantage of the beautiful weather. It's like 12 degrees. Temperature is a construct. Okay, seriously, John, what is your plan here? Is yeah, you've heard of Christmas in July, right? Well, I wanted to do July and Christmas. Yeah, that makes no sense. Pour yourself some lemonade. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's frozen. Uh, yeah, it's summer. It's frozen lemonade. You're the one who's gonna be frozen if you don't get out of here. Come on. <laughs> All right, let, let me get you a coat at least, okay? <laughs> Here you go, buddy. 
I feel great. <laughs> You're strong, Brandon. You work out. I warn you. <laughs> John. And welcome to The So-and-So Show. Hey, Christmas Day is just a few days away, and we wanted to wish you a very Merry Christmas from all of us here at the show. Hey, John, what's one of your favorite Christmas traditions? Uh, the lighting of the Yule Logs. Really? Mm -hmm. That didn't turn out so well for you last year. <sighs> what are you doing, oh. John? Hey, Brandon. Hey. Uh, Longbeard Carl cut this limb down, and I thought I'd use it for the annual Yule Log. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't have a fireplace. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, Brandon, hold on what? a second. Ah. Hey! Brandon, there's a squirrel back here! What does the whole family hate you, little squirrel family? How you doing there in the tree? Hey, hey, you! No, no. No, stay back. No. Oh, no! Oh! No! No, no! That burns! Ah, get it off! Get it off! It's on my eyes! Ah! Ah! Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, I forgot all about that. <clears throat> Squirrel, where? One of my favorite Christmas traditions is the Christmas card, but we decided this year we were gonna do living Christmas cards, so let's see what we got. Okay, yeah. Oh, here's one from Longbeard Carl. Oh, Longbeard Carl. Oh, this should be interesting. And it should be fun. Festive. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else we got. Now. Okay. Uh, oh, here's one. Oh, here's one from the So and So Show player. Oh. Hey. <laughs> oh. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Thy leaves are so unchanging. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Thy leaves are so unchanging. Not only green when summer's here. But also when it's cold and drear. Oh, Christmas tree! Thy leaves are so unchanging. So moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you know, uh, another one of my favorite things to do at Christmas is to reach out to the people I love and tell them I am thankful for them. All right, let's call some people. Okay, here you go. Me, you want yeah, me to do pull it? up my contact list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Got it. And just scroll through it. Oh, I see what we're doing. Okay. Hey, I'm having trouble putting this on my face. You got it. Scrolling. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Scrolling. Yeah. Okay. Scrolling. And stop. Great. You are now calling a random person. Okay. Oh no. What? Hello. It's Sugar Tilt a Whirl. The cotton candy lady. Yes. Yikes. Hello, Sugar. Wow. If it isn't Brandon and the one with the hat. It's John. I know. <laughs> uh, are you still in the cotton candy business, sugar? You ever been to a carnival in December? I haven't. Eat a lot of cotton candy around the Yule Log, do ya? No, but I, I thought- Business maybe, maybe... is slow is what I'm saying. We're so sorry. What are you sorry for? It's not your business. Your business is sitting there and talking. You can do that year round. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to I've say launched a new business for Christmas. Uh, what is your business? Everyone loves singing telegrams, right? Sure they do. <laughs> no, they don't, John. Everyone hates singing telegrams. They're obnoxious and invasive. Okay. So I came up with a new kind of telegram just in time for the holidays. Want to buy one? Uh, sure, I'll take one. That'll be twelve ninety nine. I accept Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, Ethereum. Oh, okay. Um, uh, all right, there. Thanks. Come in. Thank you for your purchase of Sugar Tilt to World Screaming Yellowgram. Why sing when you can yell? Dear Brandon and the other one. I hope your Christmas is filled with good tidings and silent nights. Stop. 
I hope you get everything you wished for. Unless you wished for cotton candy, because I'm not doing that right now. We talked about this. Stop. Happy Christmas to you both. You are the only friends I have. Stop. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Huh? Uh, but here's something we should all expect. Huh? It's Bible story time with Kellen! Stop. What is up, good people? Just getting our Christmas cheer on. I like it. Hey, Kellen, what's one of your favorite Christmas traditions? Oh, I am a huge fan of giving gifts. Oh, I love getting gifts. I think he said giving. Right. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love getting a good gift, but there's really something special about finding that unexpected surprise to give someone you love. It's really cool. I also love telling today's Bible story every year. So let's take a look at the book of Luke and the unexpected surprise that God gave to the world. Lights? It happened like this. Caesar Augustus made a law, a decree, a census would be taken, which meant everyone in the Roman world would be counted. Hear ye, hear ye, I, Caesar, declare. No, I decree, everyone in the Roman world is to be counted. You must return to your hometown to be listed, and so it has been said, and so it will be so. Joseph was engaged to Mary, who was pregnant and about to give birth. When he heard the emperor's decree, he knew he had to travel to his hometown. And so, Joseph and Mary began their journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, the town of David. The journey probably took them several days. So think about that next time you want to complain about driving a few hours to visit your grandparents. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, there was no place for them to stay. Hey, we need a place to stay for the night. Sorry, guest rooms are all full. Please, Mary is about to have a baby. Isn't there anything you can do? Not unless you want to sleep over there. We'll take it. So Mary and Joseph stayed near the animals, in a cave or a stable of some kind. While they were there, Mary gave birth to a baby boy. There was no bed, so Mary wrapped the baby in large strips of cloth and placed him in the manger. The manger was a feeding trough for animals. The baby, of course, would be called Jesus, and he was the Son of God, and he would one day become the Savior of the world, a very humble and unexpected gift on that first Christmas, the best present any of us could ever ask for. And that is the Christmas story. Wow. Yeah, that was great, <laughs> right? I love this story. There's so much going on at Christmas. Getting gifts and going to parties, seeing family and friends, Christmas movies, all the really good things. But the Christmas story reminds us that God loves us so much that he sent his son for us. And that's what Christmas is all about. Merry Christmas, Kellen. Merry Christmas, fellas. See you later. Later. I love that Christmas all started with a gift. God's gift of his son, to the world. Hey, maybe that's why we give gifts for Christmas, to remind everyone of that very first gift. I think you're right, John. Ah. So, reveal the question. What are you giving this Christmas? Yeah, we love to talk about what we're getting for Christmas, but what are you giving? You can give someone your time. You can give someone something unexpected. Mm-hmm. Herb-crusted goat cheese. Uh -huh. Were you expecting it? No, I was not. Huh. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can give someone your love with your actions, your words, and that can point people to God who loved them so much he sent us his son. Yeah. Talk about it with each other, and we'll see you next time on the So and So Show! Merry Christmas! Christmas. You want to bite? I don't. <laughs> Jingle bells! Jingle bells! Jingle all the way! Oh, what fun no. it no. is to ride no. a one no. no. open sleigh! Stop! Jingle bells! Jingle bells! Oh, Jingle oh. all the way! <laughs> oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh! Stop. Don't stop before you break the set. <laughs> so, what is Christmas?
does this really mean? Yeah, we get to have fun with all those other things, but if we had to come up with a word other than Jesus, Christmas means love. You see, God loved the world so much. He loved you and me so much that he gave Jesus to be in this world. Think about this. God who is beyond time, meaning God doesn't operate on our timetable. He's not confounded to space like we are. He doesn't have limitations. He chose to put himself in a body of a man that has limitations, that feels emotions, that had frustrations, that had all these things, but never sinned. You see, God entered the world through Jesus and through Jesus, as a, even though we celebrate Christmas when he was a baby, grows up to live a perfect life. To live a perfect life to show us what it means to worship God the Father, to have uh, relationships with other people, to, to tell others about the good news about who Jesus is so I, that way other people can know who Jesus is and follow him. But ultimately, love is what made Jesus die on the cross. You see, he came into this world with a mission, and that mission was to save you and me. To save us from our sin that had separated us from God. You see, we were in desperate need of a savior. We were in desperate need of someone to bring us back to a relationship with God because there was nothing that we could do to get rid of our consequence of sin. There's nothing we can do to get rid of the punishment of sin. We can try all we want, but we're going to fail at the end of the day. And in fact, God says what we do is not good enough. There's no, matter, there's no amount of good things we can do to try to even earn God's grace and God's love. But he freely gave his son as a way for us to enter back into a relationship with God. So that way when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we are brought back together with God. No trying, no effort, no amount of good grades or good behavior or doing the right things. All we have to do is put our trust in Jesus, have faith, believe that he lived a perfect life, died and rose again, and make him the boss of our life, saying it's no longer the life that I lead, it's no longer Pastor Tony's life, but it's Jesus living in and through Pastor Tony, so that way others can see who Jesus is. So as you celebrate Christmas this year, as you're opening up gifts, and as you are um, eating Christmas cookies and spending time with family, and watching Christmas movies, I, I want you to remember that Christmas is about love. And I want you to remember this main thing. I want you to remember that God loved us so much that he gave us a savior. Now I know this is weird because you may think, well, do I really need saving? And the answer is yes. You see, our sin is so big and so bad that we need a savior. Now, when we think of being saved, I, you know, I remember when I was in fourth grade, um, when I think of saved, when I was a kid, like I had to literally be saved uh, by using the Heimlich maneuver. So I was choking on food and one of my mom's friends came over and gave me the Heimlich maneuver and basically I thrusted my, my stomach up and I spit out the food, but he saved me because I was choking. I felt it in that moment. If we don't have anything big going on, guess what? We may not feel like we need saved, but the truth is, is our sin is a big deal. When we disobey God, when we do those bad things, it is a big deal. And not for us to be have guilt over or feel bad about and bad about ourselves, but realizing that God gave his son and God gave Jesus because he loves you so much. And there's no amount of sin that separates you from God. And the only thing that brings you back in a relationship with God is through Jesus. Now, I know most of you have made that decision to follow Jesus. I know most of you have made that said, I am a Jesus follower. But I know there's some of you that are watching that have never made that decision to follow Jesus. That you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus. That you've never made him the boss of your life. Maybe you go to church and you say that you are a Jesus follower because you go to church. But you've never made that decision to say, you know what? It's no longer my life that I lead, it's Jesus living in and through me. It's no longer my actions, but I try to live as if Jesus, what, uh, kind of like what would Jesus do in this moment? How would Jesus talk? What would Jesus say? How would Jesus treat my brother and sister? How would Jesus honor my, uh, my mom and dad? 
You see, it, it changes things. So this Christmas, I want you to spend time focusing on who Jesus is, what he's done for you, but more importantly, how much he loves you. And that's what Christmas is all about. And that's the reason why I love the Christmas holiday. It makes us stop and pause and remember who Jesus is and how great he is and how much he loves us. So kids, I, I pray that you guys have an awesome Christmas time. Uh, I, I hope that we get to see you at one of our Christmas services. Um, come say hi to us. We can't wait to hear all about Christmas. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys have an awesome winter break as well. And we'll see you guys next week for Hope Kids at Home. You guys have an awesome Christmas from Hope Kids and from myself. Actually, I'm just kidding. We have one more thing to do. And I forgot about this until after I made the video. So here we go. I have to announce the winners of the Christmas Kazoo game. So here's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna give you the answers. And remember, if you got three or more right, you were entered in for a drawing for prizes. Then after I reveal the answers, I will tell you our two winners of the game. So check out the answer, see if you got at least three out of five. And then I'm gonna announce who won after you guys see them. So here are the winners of the Christmas kazoo game. Noah and Kinley Robinson, you're gonna get a gift from Hope Kids. And then Kennedy and Granger, you guys are getting a gift from Hope Kids. So you guys will get that this next week. Remember, make sure to play this game as far as what present you think I would like to get for Christmas. And then I will announce the winner next week for that game. I'll see you guys then.